What's up, everybody? Dick Johnson actually here on set. Rich Freeman could not make it today, but the show must go on. This is Durag News. We are here for you, keeping that Durag energy. And please excuse me, I'm not a fast reader. So we're going to see how this episode goes. Let's get into it. Y'all remember Andrew Gillum, right? The dude caught face down, ass up, butt naked in a bathroom with drugs up your ass? That was not a good look. The former mayor of Tallahassee comes out this week to give his side of the story. The truth is, is that, Tamron, everyone believes the absolute worst about that day. At this stage, I don't have anything else to have to conceal. I, I literally got broken down to my most bare place, to the place where I wasn't even sure that I wanted to live, not because of what I had done, but because of everything that was being said about me. And to be very honest with you, when you didn't ask the question, um, you put it out there, is whether or not I identify as gay. And the answer is, I don't identify as gay, but I do identify as bisexual. You know, it is said that politicians lie all the time, and I don't think he's lying. You know, shout out to him for being comfortable and actually speaking his truth, because I know a lot of people are living a life just like that, but do not have the power or strength to speak their minds and truths. But be careful who you hang out with, because you do not want to be caught slipping with your ass out and drugs in. It's not a good look, especially if you're a politician. Now, I know a lot of you may have not heard this story, but on September 11th, when Joe Biden was walking back on his aircraft, a photographer got a little too close. It is said that he broke past security and did some Spider-Man moves to get too close, but they caught him. But my thing is that's not a good mix to have a security breach on September 11th when you're trying to be the head of state. That's not a good mix, especially not on that day. Security breach? Make sure that your people is right because if you're trying to protect us and you can't protect yourself, and luckily he was trying to get that shot with the camera. You feel me? And we are back, do our exports is back. We got a new anchor this time, high percentage. I don't even waste no more time. I think you're gonna like this one. Enough is enough. Got me feeling like Vince. Cause the show's over. Whole arm in the rim. Do I gotta go again? You got need more proof that I'm him? Performance in game shows who's in the gym. Beat the scoreboard, y'all losing again. Y'all doing all this front like a school to pretend. Hello everyone. This your boy High Percentage with this week's edition of Do Rag Sports. Football Sunday's back, but the Jets' defense isn't, giving up 27 points to the Buffalo Bills in a 27-17 loss Sunday. Tom Brady's debut as a Tampa Bay Buck resulted in another loss to the Drew Brees-led Saints. Meanwhile, in New England, Cam Newton led the Patriots to a victory over the Dolphins in a 21-11 stale season opener. Newton managed to keep his chains after somebody attempted to snatch him off his neck. We ain't gonna say no names, but the video was out there. What a shit show in Kansas as fans boo during what was supposed to be a moment of silence for racial equality. <laughs> Quarterback Patrick Mahomes led the team to a 34-20 W over the Texans. Speaking of shit shows, Odell Beckham couldn't catch a break. The Browns had a blowout loss to the Ravens. Big Trust put that work in. On the other hand, players and fans showed much more class during the Falcons versus the Seahawks game. Both teams took the knee after the opening kickoff, followed by a moment of silence to bring attention to social injustices. Cincinnati quarterback Joe Burrows left stunned as the kicker blew a tying field goal with seconds left in the grind out loss to the Los Angeles Chargers. Game ended 16-13. Congrats to the Raiders for their first official win as the Las Vegas Raiders. The team will be playing their first game in a new stadium next week. Green Bay's offense was too much for Minnesota's defense. They win 43 to 34. Washington took the Eagles down 27 to 17. The Jaguars upset the Colts 27 to 20. Bears with a last minute touchdown. Anthony Miller with the catch and stare down for the W. Bears win it 27 to 23. Chargers beat the Bengals, who cares? Cards beat the Niners, who cares? Cowboys lose to the Rams 20 to 17. How about that? And the New York football Giants fall short to the Pittsburgh Steelers 26-16. Miami takes game one as the red hot heat trump the Celtics moving into game two up 1-0 in the series. 
Nuggets take Game 7 and move into the Western Conference Finals to come see LeBron James in the new Showtime Lakers. Anthony Davis better bring it. Lakers moving into the Western Conference Finals. It's been 10 years that I've been sitting in the cut. Y'all been with your successes here and there, the Golden State Warriors, the Miami Heat, the Spurs. I've been in the cut, I've been nice. It's time for me to talk my shit. The Lakers is here now, we back. Who got something to say? I don't wanna hear, oh, we got the lightest route to the bubble. We had to do light work with Dame. Dame was on fire. We had to put that fire out. Then we had to move into the next round and see the Houston Rockets. Mike D'Antoni's up out of there. Harden still thinks they're a piece away, but guess what? It doesn't matter right now because we're talking about the Lakers. The Los Angeles Lakers are moving into the Western Conference Finals. I'm looking forward to see the matchups between Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma, Rondo, and a bunch. We already know what King James is going to do. Winning is in his pedigree. That's what he said. Unless he said something like that, I'm paraphrasing. Who cares? We're going to win. Showtime Lakers is back, ready for tonight. Big shouts to Steve Nash, man. Uh, very homegrown. Relationships built with the GM, Sean Marks, Kevin Durant. You know, looking forward to seeing him working with Kyrie Irving. Uh, I really feel like this is a good move for the Brooklyn Nets. Some people may say it was some white privilege involved. Listen, if he was getting offers from other teams or if he was being shopped around, I could see that, him jumping the line and all of that. But being that he has a relationship with the general manager and Sean Marks and he's worked out with Kevin Durant, he's giving him them tidbits. Hey man, it's a lot to look forward to in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house, shout out to y'all. Shout out to Paul Gasol for naming his, his daughter after Gigi, rest in peace Gigi, man. Rest in peace Kobe Bryant. Paul Gasol, a key friend, you know, on those championship runs, they built a lot of memorable moments. Shout out to Paul, man, congrats to you. Mike D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni does it again. He quits again. You know, seven, seven seconds or less offense is not working. It doesn't seem to be working. There's no championship to fall back on and say, hey, well, I got this chip back then. You had Steve Nash, you couldn't pull it off. You got Melo, ran him through the ringer. Now you're working with James Harden and you want to cast the blame on these guys. What's going on with you? This, this doesn't work. Small ball does not work. Let's get back to the bigs, man. Let's get the big man involved, man. You know what I'm saying? Coming from, take it from me, man. Let's get the big man involved. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Giannis Antetokounmpo unfollows all his teammates. What's that about? What's, what's, what's going on? A lot of shady business going on in Milwaukee these days, man. All I know is Giannis, it's a slot for you over here, baby. Pull up. Trouble in the bubble. Daniel House under investigation for allegedly bumping and grinding with somebody on the staff. They said he needed a check. It was two in the morning. Next thing we know, He's under investigation. I don't know how this is allegedly. I don't want to com convict the guy on camera for anything he hasn't done. But hey, man, you know, when nature calls, it calls. When it's time, it's time. Boy got jungle fever. Congratulations due to Naomi Osaka for winning that Women's 2020 Tennis U.S. Open Championship over in Queens. You know, the hometown, Arthur Ashe Stadium, right off the motherfucking Grand Central. We there, we smoke out there, you know what I'm saying? Shout out go to her, shout out to her boyfriend, YBN Corday. I don't even know if he's YBN anymore, but he was showing support, showing love to his boo, celebrating with her. You know, congrats to you. Notable mention, Serena Williams. I did see that game. She did get hurt. She couldn't shake it out. You know, shit got hectic for her, but you know, we love you. We love you, Serena. You've done enough for the culture. In closing, it's your boy High Percentage with Durag Sports. And now a word from my sponsors.
remember during the lockdown when you were watching videos after videos all day because there really wasn't much for you to do? And you may have stumbled upon videos talking about child sex trafficking in America, pedophilia going on. You know, the list goes on because a lot of people nowadays are being accused of sex trafficking, pedophilia, just foul play and nasty. Like Joe Biden. I know you got to run, but a very quick question because I was very disturbed earlier today when I saw the president retweet to his 80 million plus followers a very, very disturbing, ugly message uh, accusing the, the Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden of actually being a pedophile. Is that appropriate to give publicity to a really disgusting accusation like that, especially at a time when there are all those QAnon conspiracy theories about pedophiles running the Democratic party, uh, all those anti-Semitic conspiracy theories they're spreading as well. Uh, it's so disturbing to see that, Jared. Trump, too. Charges that Jeffrey Epstein was running a sex trafficking ring in the early 2000s that included underage girls as young as 14 years old. Donald Trump in 2002 said of Epstein, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. He routinely spoke fawningly of Jeffrey. He admired Epstein's lifestyle. Your daughter, she's beautiful. Can I say this? A piece of it. Yeah. I've actually always been very voluptuous. What does Tiffany have of Marla? She's got Marla's legs. <laughs> we don't know whether or not she's got this part. So is that the thing? Just call somebody a pedophile? Now, I'm not with none of that pedophilia. Y'all need to leave these kids alone. But also, I do understand that if you just keep saying something, it becomes noise. And if you hear a whole bunch of pedophiles there, the pedophiles there, you don't really know what to believe anymore. And then the pedophiles win and slip right away. Which brings me to the movie Cuties. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't want to see it. I'd rather not because even when little girls twerking on my Instagram, I have to swipe. I'm not trying to watch that. So I don't know how I can watch a movie like that. But whoever did, hey, some people call it inappropriate. Some people are trying to get that movie out of here. I'm not really trying to watch it. But I will say one thing. Cuties is not the only one. There's many movies that have been very questionable and we just ignore it for whatever reason. So if you really want to cancel movies for inappropriate little girls doing things, the children doing... We're going to have to go back to the history books of film because they're not the only one. And shout outs to me for Dick Thoughts because this feels a lot like Dick Thoughts, but it's a green screen and a table. So enjoy, but just know the show must go on. What it is, Dick Johnson back again with another set of Dick Thoughts. It's almost fall, so now I have to put my little fall outfit on, you know, switch it up. And you too can get some of your own up and out of peril. But we'll talk about that another time. Let's get into it. Did you see that Clippers vs. Nuggets game? That's a big life lesson. I'm calling this chapter of my life sacrifice. The Clippers sacrificed so much for Kawhi and Paul George. And this is what happens in the second round? Do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Make sure that the investment is playing its part in the bargain. Flop. Flop. I heard that Cardi B and Offset may be going through a divorce. I know people making a lot of the WAP jokes and the WAP, WAP, the WAP don't stop. But there is still a WAP going on. And that's a wet ass pillow. Because at night, you really don't know what these people are going through. You know, because they post and smile and look good online and on post and make you feel like you're missing out on something. I ain't missing shit. I see this shit all day. Don't get these lines blurred. Do not fall for the boule out to play. These people are just like you. The only thing is, they got more people looking at them. So make sure if you're gonna chase all the people looking at you, that your life is right because it can be you too one day. Because we all make mistakes and we all go through real pain. Now I know for a lot of us, 2020s feel like a domino effect. It's fall after fall and we really don't even know where it started but I thought about something the other day in the garden over there I was looking at the garden and all the plants that have been grown early on in this year and a lot of them took one itty bitty seed to grow to immaculate bush fruits and vegetables we have to look at ourselves like that we are the seed it takes one little nugget to create a plethora of energy, food, resources, and more. Make sure that you are planted 
where you belong so you can reap the harvest that you are meant to produce. We are in the age of Aquarius if you believe those kind of things and a lot of people are not just allowing themselves to have the curtains pulled over them. We have a lot of people just sitting there telling us a whole bunch of stuff. Like tech people making medical decisions for mass people. We have computer geeks making medicine for us nowadays. We have an election coming up with two white men who seem to have their own hidden agendas. In places our country is burning and no one knows what's next in 2020 because we all feel like something else is on the way. And I know a lot of you may feel like there's a game being played with our lives. I definitely feel like the system is playing with our lives like pawns. And if you are in the game, you can complain or you can gain in the game. Do not let what you see define what it is for you. Make sure that you are molding, creating the reality that you wanna see. 2020 is showing me so much and 2020 is making things so real. Make sure you're on the right side of history. Keep pushing on, keep moving forward. Eat good, think good. Positive is only what you see and negative is only what you make it. I don't keep rambling on. It's been another set of dick thoughts. Until next time, we up and out. And I'm feeling good, I gotta get more into my nature because I know it's gonna get cold out here. But peace out. I just seen the video of David Ware. He was pulled over for a traffic stop and, well, roll the footage. You wouldn't be here if you didn't pull out in front of a cop car while I got a green light, dude. I pulled out in front of you. I had plenty of fucking room. This Step is bullshit. Step out of the car. I'm not stepping out of the car. Step out of the car. I am not. You have two choices. You can step out of the car. Or I can drag you out. Or we can tase you. What? Not this is your your breaking. Look, hey, y'all step out of the car Man, now. Get out! Help! 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 You got him. What the? What the? Ah! Ah! Damn, he aired those dudes out. They showed a lot of restraint, a lot of patience. When a black man with some restraint and patience. And I'm not saying don't give a black man restraint and patience so he can shoot you too, but damn. When you can see yourself, you treat yourself a little bit different. I don't understand what's going on. This is crazy. You know, and to be honest, when I watch videos like that, I always compare myself. What would I do in that situation? How can I act like that in a situation? And nine times out of 10, I can never do it. I can never think of a way to act like that to get a result like that. But I don't want to keep saying the same old tunes that we've been singing. But I do know one thing. When you are not represented, it is hard to see yourself in other people. Video surface of Kanye peeing on his Grammy. There's a video of Kanye peeing on his Grammy. That's kind of dope. Because awards to me really don't mean shit. Because why does somebody else have to validate you? I really respect it. But it also hurts feelings because a lot of people are fighting. I, to be honest, I respect him peeing on the Grammy. Fuck it. I'm off that. Bigger and better things.
And it's so hard because a lot of people will do the most to get a Grammy, and Kanye's peeing on it. So what does that say? It's just like money. It looks good when you don't got it, but when you have it, huh? Fuck it. What do y'all think about these vaccines? Are you taking it? Are you not taking it? You know, me personally, I don't want to take these vaccines. But then again, I'm not going to lie to you and say, would I be stuck in a rock in a hard place if I have to get money and I have to move around in this country? And if it's mandatory, I have to have one? That is a battle that you're going to have to deal with all yourself because I respect you for not, and I understand if you do. Me personally, I'd rather not have these vaccines mandatory because there's been diseases and a whole bunch of shit for years. People get sick and certain people don't and they haven't taken vaccines. So I feel like there's more to the story and I feel like we are entitled to our own decision. Come on, that's our birthright. Have you seen a new Netflix documentary, Social Dilemma? That's a real good flick, I recommend it. It talks about how we're all addicted and being manipulated by these social media companies because we are addicted to the screen. Fiends for the screen, I should